doing some more work on the S15. I'm going to be doing the wiring and doing all of the routing and everything. I'm going to keep this video a bit more of a vlog style and then that way it kind of gets you guys involved and obviously with me working on an S15 this could differ from car to car what I'm about to show you today. So obviously trying to do it as a tutorial or a how-to guide is, isn't really going to work for this footage so I'll keep you updated on what I'm doing show you some tips and tricks on how you can do different crimps, how you can route your wires, etc. And then you can take that advice and apply it to your own build. So let me just go over what I'm going to be wiring today. We've got here a three-port Mac Boost solenoid that I showed you guys earlier. I've already wired one end of this just so that I can get used to the crimp process and the wiring process. And you'll see here I've also got a nice little OEM style clip for the connector itself. So that'll keep it away from any moving parts or any hot parts that are in the engine bay. I've also got the intake air temperature sensor. I have sent the intercooler pipe work off for some welding. If you follow my Instagram story, you'll obviously know that. And once that comes back, there'll be a nice little bung for me to screw this sensor in. And the ECU needs this so that it can tell how much fuel it needs to inject based on the temperature of the air. And finally, we've probably got one of the most important sensors if you're gonna be tuning your ECU on your own. So this is a wideband oxygen sensor and this allows us to see how much fuel and air is going into the engine and we can then adjust our tune accordingly based on what this sensor reads. So there's nothing really too complicated to do today. What I'm going to try and do is keep the OEM wiring intact as best I can. I'm going to have to remove the connector on the boost control solenoid on the stock harness. Now this, this isn't really an issue as I wasn't using the OEM boost controller anyway and it's quite a simple boost controller so if I do need to revert back to the stock ECU that's not going to be an issue. And then finally the intake air temperature sensor, that's probably going to be the longest wire route that I'm going to do and so I'm going to try and see how close I can keep it to the bodywork so that the wiring isn't going to get snagged or snapped or caught in any of the moving parts. So let's get right to it. The main area of focus today is actually gonna be down here and this is where the stock OEM harness enters the driver's compartment. I'm gonna be running wires from the different areas. So we've got the boost control solenoid is gonna go down there. Over there is where the intake air temperature sensor is gonna be. Obviously you can see the intercooler piping's not there at the moment. And then the O2 sensor is gonna go down there behind all of those pipes and that's where the bung is on my downpipe at the moment and I'm going to be trying to use braid for the rest of the wiring as I think it looks a lot better and a lot neater than using tape or some of the OEM style wrappers that you can get for the wires. Before doing any electrical work on your car you're going to want to disconnect the positive and negative terminals from your battery. In my case it's in the boot. So to start with, I'm gonna unbolt the stock harness and that's just held on with these two plates here. There's also two earthing points on the intake manifold so I'm just gonna take them off as well. Now that I've got some freedom in the wiring loom itself, as you can see, I've managed to just get my hand down here and there's like a little grommet that all the wires go into and I've just pulled that out of the firewall itself. And then what I'm gonna be doing is taking off all of this wrapping around here so that we can actually get wires in and out of that grommet and into the passenger bay. So I've got some clippers here and I'm just gonna very carefully go through the wiring protection on the harness. So we can see here that I've managed to get most of the protective sheathing off here and around the rubber boot, which now means I can get wires into there and into the cabin, which is great. So I'm just going to take you guys into the cabin now and show you where the wires come through and into the passenger footwell. So in the passenger footwell, we've got the ECU and the ABS unit and the wiring goes down there and then it goes up 
behind all of that and out into the engine bay. So it's quite straightforward. All we've got to do is route the wiring so that it comes through here. To do that, I'm going to remove the ECU and the ABS unit from all of the brackets and then it should be fairly straightforward. I'll just unclip the harness and then I'll be able to see where those wires come through. All of this can seem quite daunting, but it's worth the effort. So stick to it, guys, if you're doing this on your own build. All of those connectors are now done on the inside and there's a lot more room in this harness to play with, which is great. OK, it's starting to get a little bit dark outside now, so I am going to call it a night on it at the moment. And then for you guys, it'll be moments later. But for me, I'm probably going to work on it in the next couple of days. Hey guys, so I'm back at it again today. I'm just going to do some quick stuff. I had a thought overnight about how I'm going to tackle the grommet in the firewall and I think after playing around with it and trying to get the wires actually through the grommet I think the best way to do it is to actually poke a hole through and just feed the wires through there. I know it's not perfect but I think somewhere down the line I'll probably pull all the engine harness out and redo it all anyway and that'll give you guys some good content. It also gives me some good work to do and some good practice so for now just going to push the wires through a hole in the grommet and that way we can at least get them into the ECU and get this thing started. So I just thought I'd quickly show you what I'm doing. What I've got is a really thin metal piece of rod and I'm just going to sellotape the electric wire to the rod and then there's a tiny hole in the grommet that I've made and I'm just going to push that through the hole in the grommet and then into the passenger footwell. Okay so we can see down here I've got all of the wiring that I'm going to need for the wide band and the intake air temperature sensor and that just goes through this little hole that I've made there. So for the wideband wires, I've got these here, and these are going to go obviously over to here. The actual wideband and the loom off the wideband sensor itself is quite long, so I might not need this much wiring. I might be able to trim it down a bit, but always give yourself plenty of wiring to work with so that you know if you make any mistakes, you can always just cut the wire back and start again. And then for the intake air temperature sensor wiring, this is quite long, and that's going to go along here, round underneath this crash bar here. And then it's going to come up through here along with this wiring here and it's just going to simply connect into the intake pipe which will then go into the throttle body there. It's all quite straightforward, nothing too complicated and uh, what I'm going to do is braid the wiring now and just show you what I've done and how I'm going to do that with the rest of the loom and hopefully it should help you guys out with your wiring. Typically when you buy your braid off the internet it'll come with frayed ends what I recommend you do is either tape this up or something like that just while you're working with it and that way it isn't going to fray. And then once you've worked out what length you want, you're just going to use a hot knife and just cut the ends and that way it'll melt all of the little bits together and it won't fray when you're trying to work with it. As you can see, I've actually started the braid on this wire. Okay, so to move the braid up the wire, you're just going to pinch the end with the wire in and just push it up like that and slide it down. Once you've run all the braiding up the wires, you can then route the wires. I'm just going to go over the routing that I've taken and explain why I've taken that route. So obviously we've got the wires coming out of the bulkhead. I've then got some glue lined heat shrink over the end of the braid and that just helps prevent it from fraying and moving about. I haven't heat shrunk that yet just because I might need to make a few adjustments. That's then going to follow the OEM harness underneath the ABS and just comes out there. I've cable tied it in place and I've done it loosely again just in case I need to move the wires around but what I've tried to do is make sure that the cable ties are in the same place as the OEM position. That's then going to follow underneath the intake pipe and it's going to come out near the mass airflow harness. I'm then going to follow it around here and I've done so loosely just so that it's not rubbing on the chassis. I might even get a P-clip there where the OEM airbox bolt is. That then comes through behind here. And you can't see it, but what I've actually done is I've used the OEM harness clips, these brown ones here, to hold the wiring in place. It comes all the way around here. You can see where my cable ties there, and then it obviously comes out here. And I've tried to leave that bit slack just so that it's not rubbing on anything. Back into the engine bay, and then we terminate here. Again, I've put some heat shrink over it, but I haven't shrunk it yet. And what I'm going to do now is put the... IAT connector onto these wires now. First thing I'm going to strip out these wires. These are quite old wire strippers and I could really do with getting some new ones but I've lost them. And I'm just going to 
cut off about a mil of the insulation trying my best not to strip any of the actual copper wires out of here so there you go that that leaves us with plenty of copper to work with I've then got my connector here with all of the seals these actually come with some weather seals now typically it is easier to put the weather seal on before you strip the wire but it doesn't matter too much so I'm just gonna slide these on now and the thin section needs to go towards the actual crimp terminal itself I'm gonna get the crimp terminal and put it into the crimp tool itself slide those copper strands in line up the weather seal with the technology pin and squeeze nice and hard like so and then just go careful not to break the crimp as we pull it out do a little bit of a tug test as you can see that's nice and seated in there and then we're just going to do the same on both of them whatever you do don't do what i've just done and forget to put the rubber boot over the top of this <laughs> otherwise you'll spend at least 20 minutes trying to de-pin the connector So now that I know that I've got all the wiring where I need it to be and I don't need to cut any more off, I can now shrink the heat shrink down and then slide this rubber boot over all of this mechanism and then finally put the connector on. And that's your finished product. I'm just gonna do a final test on the continuity of all of the wires. So what I've done is I've jumped the two pins together at this end of the harness. I've stripped back the wires at this end of the harness. I'm just gonna hold the pink against the black and then touch the green. And as you can see there, we've got continuity. There's about two ohms of resistance in the whole wire, which isn't too bad. So now I've shown you that process with the intake air temperature sensor, that particular harness being the longer of the two. I'm now going to just do the boost control solenoid and I'm also gonna do the wideband harness. Okay, so I've fitted the boost controller now and what's gonna happen is this little connector here just goes down there into that connector there. And that's quite nice and tidy. I'll leave that unplugged. This, this is just a temporary solution. I'm gonna buy an actual bracket for this controller and then mount it onto these two pins here and it'll move it a little bit further. And I'm just finishing up the Y band now. And then all I need to do is actually fit the Y band into the exhaust down there and we're good to go. And that's the Y band sensor crimped and finished as well. So that's everything done now. Okay and I have just finished crimping all of the connectors for the ECU. So ECU master give you these crimp terminals here and they're just open barrel crimp terminals like all of the other connectors that I've been using in this video. On the back of the printout, you've got all of the pinouts for the Y band. And then obviously in my previous video, like I was showing you all of the pinouts for the inputs and outputs. And basically all I've done is matched up all of the Y band inputs with the card input for the 12 volt what i've done is i've spliced into the ignition 12 volt for the ecu and i've used an open barrel crimp i haven't soldered that joint and that should make it a lot more sturdier and more reliable i'm also going to run some cable ties over all of these as well just to add some extra strain relief and then the only thing left to do with all of this is to mount it up i'm gonna have to have a look online and see what other mounting options people are using. If you guys are using a mounting option in an S chassis with the Emu Black, drop me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you've done. I'd love to hear from some of you guys that are running these in S chassis. That's pretty much it for the footwell. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Just to recap what I've done on the car, I've done the intake air temperature sensor wiring. I have also wired in the boost control solenoid and I've wired in the wideband oxygen sensor. Hopefully you guys have learned something from what I've shown you today. I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to do wiring yourself. I know a lot of people get scared or think that wiring is some kind of black magic and it really isn't. The tools are available out there on, online, as is all of the documentation and knowledge that you need. I think ECU Master themselves do a really good job of giving you documentation to be able to follow through and actually finish a decent wiring setup on your ECU Master black or classic. 
And also, if you guys have any questions about your own build, drop me a comment below. I might be able to help you, or I can certainly send you in the right direction of somewhere to go where you'll be able to get plenty of information, or if you need tools. I'm always open to feedback, and I'm more than happy to listen and try and help you guys with your builds at home. That's great. Thanks for watching.